Pier City Cycles is myself and Stuart. We started in 2015. Um, at the time, Stu and I were working at a BMW dealership. Shortly after we started, the R9T came out and basically both of our passions fell together and um, really ignited our fire for wanting to customise BMW bikes. The brand itself, BMW, I very much fell in love with it when I started working for a dealership down on the south coast. I love the way that the brand was put together. I love the bikes. I love how easy they are to work on and I love the build quality. It's the fact that BMW have kept it basic. The original Gen 1 R9T had the, the, the simple ethos of let's take an engine that we know is reliable, offers good power, but let's stick a front end in it that we know that handles in the form of the RR forks. So as well as keeping it back to basics, they wanted to keep it with the old school aesthetic. The R9T lends itself perfectly because of its basics to be customised. It's a real good blank canvas. We wanted to go up and do some of the bike shed shows and stuff like that and hang out there. The custom cafe scene was really sort of exploding at the time. And when the R9T uh, hit the market, it combined all of the, the fun and the handling and everything we liked about all of our sports bikes and sort of like fun riding with the side of sort of classic heritage customizable side of the bike shed. So you can kind of go out and really enjoy a ride, but kind of also turn up at the cafe and look cool and, and hang out and, and build something bespoke and different to everybody else. So with the i18, obviously it lends itself to a totally different profile to a lot of the bikes that we tend to build. This really gave us a chance to play with something that was a cruiser bobber style, it was something completely different. Um, totally different sort of style of uh, frame and everything else, which, it, you know, it brought up new challenges. It's got fly-by-wire. There's, there's a lot of stuff that when you sort of really look at the, the breakdown of how the bike is built, it's put together very differently to the R90, even though they're both sort of heritage range. So it gave us a, a chance to get our creative juices flowing. But it's been real, it's been a challenge, but it's been a good challenge. We like to push ourselves, and obviously a whole new model gives us a very good opportunity to, to push ourselves into something completely different. We, we got the bike in, stripped as much off as we could, and really just tried to sort of look at the bike as a silhouette and see where we we're going to go from there. Um, once we'd had that opportunity, we put some renders together and stuff like that, and it gave us a, a sort of side profile where you could look at the bike and say, this is going to work, and then at that point, it's really a case of picking and fine-tuning all the specific features that are going to make it your bike. Um, we just wanted to totally bring the bike into the 21st century, so we've gone, you know, LED lights, running lights, we've done all sorts of stuff that a lot of other people haven't done. We've done a bespoke exhaust, we've done bespoke mud guards, all of these parts are basically the PCC stamp on it, you know, the stuff that you can't just grab off the shelf. That's kind of... The, the big wins for us, you know, the stuff we really enjoy doing is getting into the, the fabrication room and grinding and making and doing stuff that's different to somebody else's R18. And for us, we just wanted to go, let's go totally different. We want to go sort of neo, we want to go as modern as possible. You know, it's obviously a, a clear heritage look of the bike, but in going heritage the same as everybody else, we wouldn't necessarily have something to set ourselves apart. So we went, let's go modern with it. We wanted to utilise the fact that we could take some weight out of it and give it sort of a better on-road presence. So we wanted to work on the rear end and the exhaust due to the fact that obviously a lot of the weight is in from the tank backwards with the rear mud guard, the seat. My favorite option, 719 parts are the wheels. Like, no hesitation there. The wheels look fantastic. Like, from the fork cover caps to the bar ends, the cylinder covers in the front, what I call the front engine chest plate, they're very well made, excellently machined parts. They look fantastic, but it's the wheels that are at the top of the list for me. They just really sign off the build and just give it that really stand out from the crowd feature that it deserves really.